Good morning. I'm Skip Conover, and uh, this is going to be a lecture about individuation in Dr. Jung's work. Uh, individuation is the th central theme of Dr. Jung's work, and it's about how to reach meaning in your life, to understand the meaning of your life, and why it is important. The U.S. Army uh, adopted a motto a few years back, which was, be all you can be. And fundamentally, that's what individuation is about. But before I get into discussing it in greater detail, I want to first say that um, I've been studying Jungian psychology for 29 years, uh, but I am not a licensed clinical psychologist, nor am I a certified Jungian analyst. Uh, I'm simply a layman, and so I'm giving uh, these talks based on what I feel would be helpful to laymen in understanding Dr. Jung's work. Uh, Dr. Jung's work is like an elephant where no one helps you. It's like the committee that tries to describe an elephant. One member of the committee has the trunk, uh, one has a leg, and one has the tail. And they're trying to describe an elephant based on what they're touching. And that's very, very difficult to understand uh, because Dr. Jung was really talking about an entire universe, your universe, the universe that's in the psyche. And in order to do that, he wrote uh, more than 20 volumes of, in his collected works of psychological material. And he worked and studied with many colleagues uh, for about 50 years when he was actively doing this work. And so it was uh, actually more like 60 years <laughs> that he was actually doing this work. And so uh, it would be impossible to express in one video uh, what his work is about. And so what I hope to do in these lectures is talk about uh, how it's affected my life, how an individual layman can get into Dr. Jung's work and understand it a bit. And so in order to get there, uh, I thought that the best way is to start at the place Dr. Jung really ended, which was that his work was essentially about individuation and how an individual person can find the meaning of their life and live a happy life based on that. Now, individuation means that your psyche knows what you want to be. This is not your ego. This is not your conscious mind. This is your unconscious mind. And in future lectures, I'll talk about uh, the unconscious. But I'm sure you will find that many times in your life, things drive you, cause you to do something. Uh, you fall in love with someone. You see someone across the room, and instantly, that's the person for you. That's your... That's your unconscious mind deciding for you uh, what it wants. And so very often people who have this love at first sight experience um, do end up marrying that person because their unconscious is driving them to be with that person. And very often it can be a mistake it, because once because what happens in uh, the context of Jungian psychology is a projection. And what that is, is that your unconscious mind has a template of what the per perfect other person will be. And when someone matches that template, 
wow, you fall in love instantly. And the problem is that that's you projecting your perfect person, uh, your per perfect life mate on someone else, but it is not that person. And so the next secret is to find out what that person is really like. And if you're lucky, uh, the two of you evolve together and learn to live together, learn to live with the things that weren't love at first sight and um, or didn't come out of love at first sight. And ultimately, uh, it's, a, it's a process. Now, how does this process work? Dr. Jung was talking very heavily about duality in the world. And the reason for that is that in um, duality, within duality is everything that we do know and do. All the psychic energy that we know and do is in duality, is it between the two extremes of duality. So let's talk about those extremes, uh, uh, masculine, feminine, man and woman, um, good and evil, black and white, night and day. Each one of those is a duality. And in each of our lives, we have many thousands of dualities. And uh, we're never or very rarely are we entirely on one side or the other. And, but sometimes we are. And so during these lectures, I'm going to be talking a, a bit about uh, political psychology and neurosis, because what neurosis is, is something like this. You, there are two ways of looking at something and you're conflicted about which way to go. And you don't know a way to decide. And in order to ultimately get to individuation and get to the center of your soul, which Dr. Jung calls the self, you have to sort out all of these dualities in one way or another. And what happens is that between the two extremes in a duality, there runs psychic energy back and forth. So if we look at it in the context of political psychology, in election 2016, uh, obviously there's a huge du duality in the United States between the Republican and Democratic parties. And all of us, fall on some point on the continuum between extreme Republican and extreme Democrat. There may be some things that we agree a little bit with the other side, and that brings us a, across the spectrum somewhat. And it's only on election day, on the last day of the election season, that we see where the mix of all these um, spectrums that are in all of the American people, where that mix finally comes down. Think of it as a needle between Republican and Democrat, and Republicans are pu pulling to the right and Democrats are pulling to the left, and it's a kind of tug of war, and that is symbolically is what a neurosis is. You're not happy because there's some duality, not like Republicans and Democrats, hopefully, but anyway, there's some duality that's pu pu pulling back and forth. And your psyche is very much like the idea of uh, on all these spectrum of duality, uh, different decisions have to be made. And so every human being falls at different places on every duality. So individuation is at the center of it. And 
by that, I don't mean the ego. I don't mean uh, the persona that you put on it. In a further future lecture, I'll talk about persona. Uh, but think of persona like this. In the military, um, everybody knows where people stand in the military. Uh, if you saw a group of 100 men uh, in formation naked, uh, you would have no idea who's in charge. But if they put their uniform on, then we know precisely who's in charge because when we put on that persona of a military officer, enlisted man, we are putting on our persona as a military person. And so on our shoulders we wear our rank or on our sleeves and on our chest we wear uh, ribbons that represent the sorts of things that we have done in our military career. So for a military person you can look at another military person and understand uh, exactly where they fit in the pecking order and you can understand what their career has been like, what kind of experience this person has. And so that's persona, but it isn't the self. The self would be what's left when all the clothes are off, when that individual is naked and uh, has nothing to hide uh, where they truly are, then it's within each one of us to know who we are, to know ourself. And we can't always do that in the conscious mind. What Dr. Jung indicated through his career and studying individuation, which ultimately his career began to focus on individuation, was that uh, that individuation is the goal of life and our psyche like other parts of our body is telling us what it wants to be what its self is what its center is and it's up to us to listen it isn't our ego and there are many ways of addressing this many of these are, were discussed throughout Dr. Jung's long career uh, but, and so we'll be, we'll be having further lectures on those, uh, but it isn't the, the ego. You have, we have to learn how to pay attention to what's inside us. Now inside us, let's give a sense of it. If you think of the universe and everything you know about the universe looking out into space, um, your psyche is like that and maybe much more because there are things in your psyche happening in your psyche that you will never know about and that scientists still don't know about and your body your being is going on every day right down to the cellular level your cells are reproducing they know what to do. They know how to do it. And that happens entirely um, unconsciously. You have no sense when your cells are dividing and some are dying and some are becoming the new cells. You have no sense of what they are doing. That's done entirely unconsciously. When your heart beats, you don't think about your heart beating unless I talk about it. Right now you might be thinking about it because I raise the topic, but on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, we don't think about our heartbeat. We don't tell our heart to beat. Uh, it happens entirely uh, unconsciously, and it happens on an average of 72 times a minute for our entire lives. Uh, the same with our breathing. Uh, we breathe maybe 12 breaths a minute. We never think about it unless I talk about it, then it comes to your mind. Uh, you weren't thinking about it until I mentioned it just now. Uh, but the breathing goes on. 
and there is so much unconscious. I can say any word and it will conjure up some sort of an image in your mind. So for example, Dr. Jung made the point that all of our thinking is done in images. Now those images might not be pictures, they might be in the form of music or they might be in the form of ideas that are in a different form uh, than, Im than actual pictures, but they are all images. So uh, let's try it with uh, five words perhaps. Uh, and we'll start with the word yacht. Now, yacht in uh, English means uh, a pleasure boat, probably, uh, to you. And when I say it, uh, you may imagine a 20-foot boat, you might imagine a sailboat or a motorboat, or you might imagine um, a boat like the founders of Microsoft own, which are hundreds of feet long. That's a yacht too. Um, and so when I say yacht, I have no idea what image it will bring up in your mind, but it gives you a certain sense of something that I'm talking about. And it's not just the meaning, it's a symbol for something that is in your psyche and you don't know where it is. Scientists don't know where these things are and scientists haven't been able to figure out how the psyche works as yet. That's uh, research that is still to be done. Um, but in any case, it always works. And if I say another word, bus, um, you might think of a little minivan or you might think of a big city bus or you might think of a trailways inner city bus. And there are many, many other buses that you would think of. And so each one of those words has a place in our psyche and they are symbolic of something that's, that's known to us, although we're not thinking about it. And so if I say the word doll, for example, um, you weren't thinking about the word doll before I just mentioned it. And I could not possibly know what dolls mean to you uh, and what doll you may be imagining when I say the word. And so all of these words are within your uh, inner psyche, your inner being. Uh, so if I say the word chair, I'm sitting in a chair right now. Um, and, you know, a chair could mean many things. It could mean a wheelchair. Uh, it could mean uh, a barco launcher. <laughs> it could mean many, many things. And so my point is that each one of us, as we think about these things, have to realize that everyone else, everyone who is... Uh, who we are meeting has a universe within themselves of images. And these images are not in any given location within our body. I can't say that my uh, yacht image is here, uh, nor can science. We just don't know. And uh, we have general ideas. Um, we can do certain types of uh, scans, electroencephalograph, and so on, where we can say what part of the brain is being activated, but we couldn't say where a specific image is, and we can only get very, so far, I mean, so far in science, we can only get so far in terms of understanding um, what that is all about, what those images are about, where they're kept, how they interact with one another, and so on. And uh, let's take one more example. Uh, let's take a pen. Um, I happen to like to collect Mont Blanc pens, so I have this nice one here with the uh, image of Mont Blanc on the top of it, and um, that's a pretty expensive pen. 
And this particular pen is uh, symbolic of the work of Jules Verne. And so as a result of that fact, the top of it is shaped like a uh, deep sea diving helmet. And uh, the blue, you may not be able to see it in this video, but the blue in this pen uh, is wavy. And so it, it evokes the sea and refers to uh, Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. On the other hand, you might think of a big pen. And I use big pens all the time because when I read Dr. Young's work, I underline vigorously. And so I've taken to getting uh, from Amazon, I get 1.6 millimeter big pens. And uh, those pens um, allow me to create a very dark line under in my underlying. And if I find something that's particularly important to me, I double underline it. And so as we begin to talk about these things in the lecture form, uh, we're going to talk about um, the whole universe of your psyche and how it works. And so there's a problem uh, in Jungian psychology, and that is that um, clinical or Jungian analysts and people who have studied Jungian psychology in depth um, tend to talk with one another on a professional level. It's their work. And they don't tend to interact with the average layman unless you're their patient, in which case they'll be happy to analyze your dreams and uh, tell you what they think they mean. They may not ever mention anything about Dr. Jung in that process of an analysis, uh, but they would be using methods that he had he developed. And but those people have associations of their own. They tend to interact with one another and they don't tend to bring Dr. Jung's work out into the general public. And this is a a shortcoming I've seen about how Dr. Jung's work has been received by the general pu public and understood. And another problem is that laymen who do start to uh, enter Dr. Jung's work often get waylaid because if you enter any specific part of Dr. Jung's work, it's like entering Disneyland. There's so much to think about and so many images and ideas coming forth that it's easy to get lost in that. And so there's a golly gee whiz reaction to Dr. Jung's work often. And people get sidetracked into some tangent about Dr. Jung's work without understanding what it could do for them, not only about understanding themselves, but understanding other family members, understanding what's going on in our society right now. Uh, for example, in election 2016, we have a psychic epidemic going on. In fact, two psychic epidemics, one following Donald Trump and another following uh, Bernie Sanders. And uh, while the media wants you to think that the duality is between Republican and Democrat, between left and right. The duality is actually between broken government and the people. And so the people have awakened, many of them, those who are following either of those two candidates, Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump, and they're against government and the, against the way that the government has been operated over the last four decades, let's say, because the result of that has been that many of us have uh, suffered financial loss, very significant financial loss because of that. And meanwhile, uh, a very few people have gathered um, 
more than half, I think the number is now 80 people in the world now control uh, more wealth than 3.5 billion human beings. Uh, something's wrong there. <laughs> and that isn't the way uh, the human species probably will be best developed in that way. Uh, who needs more Maseratis? If you have a Maserati, why do you need five of them? Uh, if you uh, want a yacht, why do you need a 450 foot long yacht? Okay, maybe you do, but um, but if you have one, then you don't need two. <laughs> and, and bring happiness. And so individuation, the process of individuation is to the process of finding yourself, your center, to know what the meaning of your life is and how you can uh, best live in life to be happy. And, um, or maybe not. Maybe um, the meaning of your life is to be unhappy. I can't say. Uh, maybe the meaning of your life is to be a warrior and go out and be killed on the battlefield. Uh, that could be a meaning of life, of your life as well. Um, I have several friends who lost their lives in defense of the United States and uh, the meaning of their life is very broadly uh, the fact that they uh, suffered and died uh, to make sure that the rest of us can become all we can become. We can be all we can be. And that only happens um, if each of us individuates it, if each of us finds our center. And uh, it also, if we take the national context, a nation is a being. It's a living, breathing being a very complicated one. Um, and what the United States is right now is a being with a mental health problem uh, because we have this neurosis between the left and the right, uh, which is extremely severe. But there's good news in that because when there's a very severe split like that, it can't last forever. It eventually those things tend to pull back. And uh, I'll give a lecture on this concept later on in this series. Uh, but one of Dr. Jung's concepts that he used that came from Heraclitus is uh, what he calls enantiodromia. Enantiodromia means the tendency of things to become their opposite. And so in terms of the duality, it's there's psychic energy pulling back and forth between the two sides. And if something gets too far over on this side, it tends to start getting pulled back the other way. And as I say, um, we have thousands of these dualities within our psyche. And so these things are always in flux and what you see is what you get. In the case of the United States, we see that we have a mental health problem right now in terms of the nation itself, but uh, gr gradually that's tending toward the center. Um, and it may switch over. Uh, for example, um, many Republicans are very proud about the fact that Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. And they say it was you Democrats that uh, were slave owners. Well, actually, that's not true because it's the um, because the opinions of the two sides have switched back and forth, perhaps several times since the time of Abraham Lincoln. And so, when I was a boy, um, the bigots in the world in the United States. Uh, were largely in the south of the United States, in former slave-owning uh, states. 
and but over my lifetime that switched and now it's the Republicans and so um, that switch is because of this concept of enantiodromia and the tendency of things that are opposite to become their opposite. And so um, as we think of individuation, it's about you and about what you will be what you will be in your lifetime. What is the meaning of your life? And it's not something that you can work out logically. You can't think it out because you'll know that very often um, you end up doing things that you didn't think you would want to do. And so you can't always control these things. But what happens in the psyche is your psyche is always attend attempting to bring you to the point where... Um, you will be happiest as yourself. And so the psyche's way of communicating with you uh, tends to be through dreams and visions. Um, largely, your psyche doesn't communicate with you. As I said, uh, it doesn't communicate with your ego. It doesn't communicate with your conscious mind because it has no need to. So your body functions, your cells reproduce, you breathe, your heart beats, and all that is done automatically, and your psyche is doing it. It does the necessary every day. The hairs in your eyebrows grow, and you never think about it. But in terms of your uh, social environment, uh, your psyche has an opinion too, and it's the opinion that counts for the meaning of your life. And so... Um, the way it communicates with you about that every day, um, for better or for worse, it's not always for better, uh, but the way it communicates with you is through dreams and visions. So, um, you know, I, years ago, 25 years ago, maybe now, um, I used to have many dreams of being executed. Um, and they would be different. They'd be by firing squad, by guillotine, by hanging, whatever, what have you. And I've come to believe that, that those dreams were about the fact that something was out of, my, out of whack in my everyday life. And certainly it was true. I was unemployed and uh, couldn't find a job. And so my psyche was... Uh, beside itself and the way it communicates is through images, through metaphor, uh, through sending you pictures or stories that help you understand what needs to happen. And so when I was receiving those very graphic execution dreams, um, my psyche was certainly panicked uh, about where I was in my life. I've been speaking now already for 33 minutes about individuation, but I think it's uh, important for me to now summarize uh, what I've been saying, which is that uh, individuation is the central theme of Dr. Jung's work, and it was where he was heading uh, throughout his six decades of writing about uh, human psychology. And uh, individuation is about finding the center, the meaning of your life. It's, uh, Dr. Jung called it the self. By the self, he did not mean the persona, what your ego presents to the world, but what deep down inside your unconscious wants to have come from your life to what meaning uh, your life will have in the long term. And uh, in terms of my life, one of the meanings, if not the meaning, um, is uh, to help bring Jungian psychology uh, to the general public in a better way um, and uh, in a more simple way that the average layman can pick it up and 
get an entrance into Jungian psychology and understand uh, where you are because it's very easy to get a little taste uh, from some book, uh, a book of Jung or a book about Jung and his ideas. There are many very good ones, uh, including uh, books written by the three people that I put on this title. Um, and, um, and I urge you to read them. But when you do that, it's like being thrown overboard from a cruise ship uh, at sea and not knowing where you are. And so the purpose of these lectures and the purpose of this Jung for Layman um, series will be to help you have an overview of Dr. Jung's work and then to uh, pick and choose where you would like to uh, put it into your life. Now, as I said earlier, uh, I've been uh, studying Dr. Jung's work for 29 years. It's had many very important influences on my life over that time. And uh, it, it's become <clears throat> a rather central uh, part of my life. And uh, you can, um, we talked earlier about uh, projection and Projection is how um, we put something that's in our psyche out into the world so that it's manifested outside of us. And uh, this is actually a projection of, of my psyche, as is the Archetype in Action website. If you look at that, which has now been operating for um, five and a half years, uh, you will find an actual representation of my psyche as it has developed over the last five and a half years. Uh, because every article and every video and picture that's on there, essentially every one, uh, maybe 0.5 percent weren't put there by me, but most of them have been. And so when I select an article to put there, it's because it says something that I think needs to be said. And by that I mean my psyche selects it as something that I think is important and would be useful for others. Um, and in that I, I'm talking about my psyche myself deciding that this is something that I want to say today. And so if you look at the Archetype in Action website, uh, you will find that you will find sort of a statement, a presentation of my psyche over the last five and a half years, whether it's my own writing or the writing of others. And of course, when others are writing, um, they are projecting their psyches and also saying things that they think are important and that they are presenting to the world as well. And so we have uh, many common interests and um, so the purpose of this uh, series is to help average people understand enough so that they can get into a get started on what is uh, inevitably a long journey. Um, I learn something new from Dr. Jung every day and it it's very often something that I can put into my life immediately. And so I hope that um, over the period that these lectures uh, take place, I hope that you can uh, benefit from that. And so just to summarize then, uh, individuation is about finding the central meaning of your life, to find the self. Uh, and once again, as I've um, said earlier, I'm not a clinical psychologist, nor am I a formally trained Jungian. And so if you are formally trained, or whether you are or not, uh, if you have questions or comments, please put them on. It's very likely that I can learn myself from what you have to say, and if I'm 
not saying something exactly the way it should be said, from your point of view, I'd like to know that. Uh, I can learn from you, no doubt about it. And so I uh, urge you to watch um, these seminars as I do them, these lectures. Uh, this is my first attempt. And when, uh, and this is June 1st, 2016. And over the next few weeks, I hope to be holding live lectures uh, in Annapolis, Maryland. I'm just uh, waiting for a venue to be available uh, for that purpose. But for now, um, I'm going to be doing these Periscope lectures and I will be uh, putting them on a new page on Facebook that I created called Young for Layman. And this will be the first video from that series. Um, so that's it. I look forward to um, having your comments on this.